Welcome to Interest Rate Swaps. In this tutorial, we'll see how two companies can help each other lower their borrowing costs through a swap agreement. Let's consider an example of companies A and B that want to borrow a million dollars each for a five-year period with annual compounding. And they want to borrow at the lowest possible rate. Company A expects interest rates to decline in the future and therefore wants floating rate borrowing, while Company B expects interest rates to rise and wants to lock in the fixed rate available to it. Although Company A wants to borrow at a floating rate, it plans to borrow at a fixed rate and then swap its cash flows with Companies B that wants to do the opposite. In the process, both companies intend to lower their borrowing costs and wind up with the type of borrowing they wanted at the first place. This is very typical of an interest rate swap, where two parties with opposing needs make an agreement to swap future cash flows. Let's take a look at the rates investors expect the two companies to pay. Company A has a credit rating of A and its annual fixed rate of borrowing is 6% whereas its floating rate of borrowing is LIBOR plus 1%. Company B, on the other hand, has a credit rating of B, therefore, therefore its annual fixed rate of borrowing is 8%, whereas its floating rate of borrowing is LIBOR plus 1.5%. When we compare the fixed rates of the two companies, we notice that company A pays 2% lower or has an absolute advantage of 2%, over company B. When we compare the floating rates of the two companies, we notice that company A pays 0.5% lower or has an absolute advantage of 0.5% over company B. In other words, investors want company B to pay a 2% risk premium over company A at the fixed rate, but only 0.5% risk premium at the floating rate. Thus, when we compare the two risk premiums, company B has a competitive advantage if it borrows at the floating rate. Had risk premiums at both the rates been same, company B would not have a competitive advantage. The competitive advantage creates an arbitrage possibility of 1.5% when both companies borrow independently and enter into a swap agreement. The two companies can then split the 1.5% in the proportion they agree upon. In this example, we are assuming that they'll split the 1.5% evenly. Thus, each party can lower its cost of borrowing by 0.75% or 75 basis points. We have to keep in mind that if the two parties had the same credit rating, the arbitrage possibility would not exist. Now let's see how the two parties can structure a swap deal. First, both companies go out and borrow the one million dollars independently. Company A borrows at 6% fixed rate, whereas Company B borrows at LIBOR plus 1.5%. Normally there would be a financial intermediary that would help the two companies structure a swap deal. But for our example, we assume that they are dealing with each other directly. Now the two companies enter into a swap agreement where company A agrees to make floating rate payments to company B at LIBOR plus 50 basis points and company B agrees to make fixed rate payments to company A at 6.25%. These rates are not magical. They are negotiated rates. They could have negotiated some other rates. Since company A receives six and a quarter percent from company B, but pays six percent to its lenders, company A gains a quarter percent on the fixed rate. However, since company B would have paid eight percent for the fixed rate on its own, but is paying a lower rate of six and a quarter percent to A, company B saves eight minus six point two five, and that equals one point seven five percent. At the floating rate, Company A pays Company B LIBOR plus half a percent instead of LIBOR plus one percent it would have to pay on its own. Thus, Company A saves half a percent at the LIBOR. 
at the floating rate. Since company B receives the floating rate payments of LIBOR plus 0.5% but must make payments at LIBOR plus 1.5%, it loses 1% on the floating rate. When we add up all gains and losses, each company winds up with a gain of 75 basis points. This was the objective of the swap deal. Both companies have lowered their cost of borrowing by 75 basis points. Let's discuss a few issues that may arise from the deal. Company A placed a bet that interest rates would decline and company B is betting on interest rates rising. If the rates move against one company, that company stands to incur a loss. When the LIBOR is 5.75%, company A pays company B 6.25% and also receives 6.25% from company B. Therefore, at the LIBOR rate of 5.75%, company A breaks even. If the rates rise above 5.75%, company A would make payments at a higher rate to company B and would incur a loss. The second issue is related to default risk. It would appear that company A is taking a big risk since company B that has a lower credit rating can default on its payments to company A. However, in reality, the payments by the two companies will be netted out. Let's assume that the LIBOR is 5%. On the million dollar notional amount, company A would owe company B an annual payment of 55000 whereas company B would owe company A an annual payment of 62500 The net result is that company B makes a payment of 7500 to company A. If company B defaults, it will be on a small amount of 7500 and not the entire amount of 62500 or the notional principle of 1 million. Besides, company B can default only once because company A would stop making further payments to company B. It should also be no noted that if company B defaults on its payments to company A, company A is still obligated to make payments to its lenders. Let's summarize what we have learned in this tutorial. An interest rate swap is possible between two parties with opposing needs where one wants to swap fixed rate cash flows for floating rate and the other wants to do the opposite. Both parties have to perceive the arrangement to be a win-win situation for the deal to take place. The notional principle is the same. In this example, it is $1 million. The time horizon for both loans is the same. In our example, it's five years. An interest rate swap occurs in the same currency, so only interest payments are swapped. The principal amounts offset each other, so they are netted out to zero. Party stands to incur a loss if the future interest rates go against its expectations. Netting of payments reduces the default risk to the other party. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful.